Blood is important. We need it to live. But how exactly is it made? Well, that's what we're going to cover in this video. So let's do it. In the blood, we have red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. These all serve specific functions and are absolutely necessary to sustain our lives. Now, these cells all need to be made, and the process for making blood cells is called hemopoiesis. I like that word, hemopoiesis. Let's dig into it further. First, let's talk about where blood cells are made. Before we're born, early in the embryo's development, there's a structure that's called a yolk sac. This structure, it's pretty cool. It helps to nourish the embryo, but that's not all it does. It's actually one of the early sites of hemopoiesis. Now, as the embryo develops, hemopoiesis starts happening in other structures like the liver, the spleen, and eventually the red bone marrow. By the time a child becomes an adult, most of the hemopoiesis actually happens in the red bone marrow. Regardless of where it takes place, the process of how it all happens it's pretty similar. It all starts with stem cells. Stem cells are cells that have the ability to become different kinds of cells depending on different factors. As these stem cells begin to differentiate, they give rise to a new kind of cell, the mesenchymal cell. This is a cell type that can differentiate into cells that form bone, blood, and other kinds of connective tissue. For those mesenchymal cells that are destined to become blood cells, they develop into a cell that we call the hemopoietic stem cell, or hemocytoblast. Now, let's break this word apart really quick. Hemocytoblast. The first part of the word is hemo. Whenever you see the prefix heme or hemo or hemato, you know you're dealing with something related to the blood. For example, hemoglobin. That's a protein complex in the blood that's responsible for carrying oxygen. Then you have cyto. When you see that, you know you're dealing with cells. For example, the cytoplasm. That's the plasma or the fluid inside the cell. And when you see blast, well, if you're my son, you think of blast off. But in the context of biology, you're dealing with an immature cell or a precursor cell, something that's going to develop into something else. So a hematocytoblast is a precursor to a blood cell. It's a cell that can become a blood cell. Okay, with that out of the way, let's continue. This is when we actually get into the process of hemopoiesis. These hemocytoblasts can either divide and make other hemocytoblasts, or depending on the environment they find themselves in, they can differentiate into one of two other kinds of cells. We have the myeloid stem cells and the lymphoid stem cells. Let's deal with the lymphoid stem cells first. Lymphoid stem cells are the ones that will give rise to lymphocytes. These are the white blood cells that are a part of the immune system. Now, the way this happens is that the lymphoid stem cells will give rise to lymphoblasts. By now, you should understand that lymphoblasts are cells that are the precursors to lymphocytes. And that's exactly what we get. They can become B and T lymphocytes, also known as B cells and T cells, or they can become natural killer cells. Now, anytime I hear natural killer cells, I think of a cell going around with like a, a machine gun shooting up viruses and bacteria that get into the body. Like what we see right here. You see this cells going, it has these things, and it's going, it's trying to find a, a virus, it's trying to find a bacteria, it finds it, and it goes after it, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and let's see, bam! It sticks it in there, and it just makes it explode load or something along those lines. Now, it's not quite that violent, but uh, it's a similar concept, right? Somewhat? No? Too much? Okay, never mind. All right, back to the B cells and the T cells. These are the white blood cells that are involved in the immune system. B cells are the ones that produce antibodies that help to protect us from things like viruses and bacteria. Oh, like this video here. Uh, we have these antibodies and you <laughs> Okay, wait, that's not exactly how it happens, but it, it gets the concept right. They help us attack viruses and bacteria. Yo, who makes these animations? I like them. Anyways, we'll get into exactly how the antibodies do their work in another video. But for now, let's move on to the T cells. The T cells, on the other hand, they are involved in what's called cell-mediated immunity. We'll get into the differences between the two in a later video. All right. 
So those are the cells that come from the lymphoid stem cell. Now, one more thing to add is that these cells don't develop in the bone marrow. In fact, the lymphoid stem cells will move to, from the bone marrow to parts of the lymphatic system, things like the lymph nodes, the spleen, and the thymus. And that's where they are stimulated to differentiate into the cells we just spoke about. Now, let's step back and look at the myeloid stem cells. Just as a quick reminder, we started with a hemopoietic uh, stem cell that could differentiate either to a lymphoid stem cell or a myeloid stem cell. We dealt with the lymphoid stem cell in detail already. Now we're gonna talk about the myeloid stem cells. The myeloid stem cell can differentiate into one of four cell types. There's the megakaryocyte, the proerythroblast, the myeloblast, and the monoblast. Now, I know that's a lot to remember. This is one of those things that I recommend that you just take a pencil and paper and just draw it out over and over, starting with the hemopoietic stem cell and making your way all the way down. But as I was saying, here's how these cells continue their differentiation. The megakaryoblast will differentiate to become a pretty large cell called a megakaryocyte. Think mega, large. Once these megakaryocytes fully mature, they will then produce the platelets. These are the fragments that are involved in blood clotting, you know, so that you don't bleed to death when you get a cut. So that's one down. Now the proerythroblast will then lose its nucleus and go through some more differentiation to become a reticulocyte. And the reticulocyte will further go through some more differentiation to become the erythrocyte. Man, this is a lot of terminology. But you know what's cool? Once you chart it out a few times, you're gonna get it. And then you're gonna feel even smarter. Anyways, where was I? Ah yes, the erythrocyte. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's the red blood cell. This is how we get red blood cells. And we like those. Okay, we're on the home stretch here. Let's finish this junk up. The myeloblast. This cell can differentiate into three different cells. The basophils, neutrophils, or eosinophils. These are three types of white blood cells that we call the granulocytes. And you can tell that they are granulocytes because if you look at them under a microscope, you'll see these little dots or granules inside the cell. And lastly, we have the monoblast. And this one is pretty easy. Monoblasts become monocytes. That's it. Another white blood cell. Yes, it's involved in the immune system. And now we have all of the formed elements of the blood. We have the B and T cells, natural killer cells, all three of them from the lymphoid stem cells. And then we have the ones that come from the myeloid stem cells, the monocytes, eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils, erythrocytes, and platelets from the megakaryocytes. Man, that's a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna stop here. In the next video, we're gonna dig into the red blood cell in more detail. We're gonna look at the structure and function. So see you over there. Peace.